session 12, Complexity Explorers Mesa Tutorial, Agent Based Modeling in Python. In this session, we'll complete our Agent Move function where we identify the closest cell that provides maximal welfare and moves our agent there. Let's get started. First, make sure that you have your IDE open, or if you're using your Google Colab instance, that is open and connected. All right, then, you want to make sure that your sugarmap.txt uh, is available to your Google Colab instance if you're doing that, which you can load manually uh, or connect your Google Drive. All right, then we make sure our sugar and spice resource classes are loaded, uh, and then we'll make sure that our uh, trader class is also loaded. We have several helper functions where we get sugar and spice, identify if it's occupied, and also we can determine what are our viable moves and how much welfare they provide. All right, we have our model class, which uh, initiates our model and then controls our uh, agent uh, movement, which we could collapse for ease, right? Uh, and then we instantiate that class and run it. See our print statements from session 11. So we'll go up here into our um, uh, sugar, our get spice amount, get sugar amount, uh, and delete those because we won't be needing those for this lesson. can continue with identifying which cell will produce the maximal welfare uh, and then which one of those cells is closest. So to do this we need to leverage the fact that we have two lists and lists are structured so that they're indexed uh, so that they're sequential and their index position matters. So first we'll add our comment to make sure we link it to our previous comment on the cell. This is section three find the closest best option. Uh, with that being said, it's important to understand that neighbors is a list of tuples that gives position and welfare right, is in that same sequence, but instead of providing neighbors, provides the amount of welfare that that cell provides our agent. Right? We can use the fact that lists have to be uh, sequential in order to identify. Uh, in order to identify which position gives us the max welfare. All right, so first we need to identify what our max welfare is. All right, so we do max welfare as a local variable equals max all right, from our list of welfares. All right, so that will give us that number using Python's primitive uh, max function. Once we identify what our max welfare is, then our next challenge will be to link these two lists together so that way we can find the positions uh, of the cells that have the max welfare. So we'll create a third data structure to link the neighbors and the welfares together. Right. As this, you know, kind of linking these together, we want to make sure we have good comments. So the first part is you have to find the highest welfare uh, in welfares. And next, we'll want to make a list that gives us all the indices uh, uh, of those max welfares. So we can extract the positions from our neighbors list. All right, so to do that, we'll uh, use Python's list comprehension again. Uh, make a comment so we understand what's happening here. Right, which is now we want to extract uh, the index of all the max welfare cells. So that way we can then get the neighbor, the tuple positions that are located in our neighbors list. I right, know it's probably a little bit confusing to listen to, but after this. We'll do a print statement uh, so that way you can see exactly what we're talking about. So we'll call this one local variable candidate indices, right? And then use i for i, right? In range of neighbors, or where well, I could use neighbors or welfare. In this case, we use welfares. Right? And now uh, we have to uh, determine. Uh, if we want to add it to our candidates indices. Now, the typical way to do this is, uh, or what might be the intuitive way to do this, right, is to do the Python's equal equal, right? To say, uh, are these the value of welfares and the value of uh, the max welfare the same, right? This, however, presents a significant problem uh, that could cause challenges later when you compare two floats uh, to each other, right? Uh, so if we say, I for i in range of lengths, welfares, or neighbors, right? If welfares at that index is the same as max welfares, right? Due to how float numbers are stored, this could become hugely problematic. The key challenge here is when you're comparing two real numbers, which are stored in, uh, in code as floats or in Python, 
you want to be very careful of using this function. And there is a better way. So if you want to learn more about this, we'll put this uh, discussion in the chat. But this is a pretty good uh, description of decimal numbers versus floats. Right? And to address this, instead of using equals equals, we use Python's math.isclose function. Right? And we'll also put this link in the chat if you want to see the Python documentation. Right? So instead of uh, if welfare equals max welfare, we're going to do if right math dot is close and then we're going to compare uh the welfare indices right so what that welfare is at that index uh, with the max welfare uh, and although based off how this particular program works uh, uh we don't necessarily need to do this right there is a keyword argument in the is close function that's important to know which is uh how uh, specific you want it to be. So in this case, it goes to, uh, it typically can go to nine decimal places, but in this case, we'll go to two, um, just to demonstrate this function. All right, as you can see here, we got some challenges. So uh, math is underscore red, All right? Make sure this is if, not is, but uh, math is underscore red because we haven't imported uh, Python's math library. All right, so uh, what we want to do is head up to our, uh, head up to our dependencies, All right? And then I uh, just add in import math. I'm going to put it here on the NumPy. It kind of fits with that. And it is uh, a kind of primitive uh, or a, a standard Python library. And now we could go back down uh, and see if we got rid of all our, our warnings about potential syntax errors. All right. So now we create our third list, candidate indices, which extracts the index of all the. Um, neighbor cell of all the welfare cells that are equal to math max welfare or close to i should say max welfare right? and then because welfares and neighbors have the same index setup that'll give us the index the indices we need to extract uh the locations from neighbors So that's what we're going to do with this next line of code, right? So we put a comment to vert index to position of those cells. Uh, we'll call this local variable candidates. So be uh, neighbor's i for that index for i i uh, in candidate indices. Right? So since candidate indices is a list of the index the indexes from welfare that have the maximal welfare and that those index match the neighbor's index make the candidates list a list of tuples that have the maximal welfare which is the positions that our agent could potentially make. might sound pretty confusing so since we have quite a bit of code where we have two lists we make a third list from those two and then reduce that down to one list of tuple positions when in doubt do a print statement so do print uh, and then we'll do our kind of key list. So neighbors, uh, candidate indices, uh, and then candidates. All right. So this will show us uh, what give us a list of tuples, a list of index for that, right? Uh, and then a list of candidates. We run that, okay, and then we run that. Uh, and this kind of honestly looks like a hot mess, right? This is a lot of information to process. Look really close, and you know what you're looking for. Uh, it's uh, you'll be able to see in in one line um, what we uh, where you have your neighbors, then the indices that have actual welfare, and then the list of those tuple positions. But since we're getting so much information here, and there's a lot of visual noise, it's really hard to kind of suss out exactly what's happening. Uh, so I got a technique that I use. It's somewhat hacky. I'm not going to uh, dispute that, but I'll put an error condition. So I only get one line, and it's easier to process, right? So I'll just use the word stop, which is not a variable. So I'll get um, an error, right? You can see here what we're looking for. We got five. We got a list of five positions. Position four, the last position, right, has maximal welfare. And then so what we get for our final list of candidates is a tuple with that position. All right, so that's really what we've done with these bits of code. Take a neighbors, list of tuples, welfares, which is uh, a list uh, synced with that list of neighbors that tells us what the maximum welfare is. Right, we create the indices 
uh, that have the maximal welfare, and then we just extract out those tuple positions. So now we have a pretty straightforward problem of going through those positions, identifying which ones are closer, so it remains consistent with uh, the book Growing Artificial Societies, right? To move them to the closest position, right? Uh, with the best option, right? And then we move our agents, which is just will be one line of code using Mace's move function. So now uh, we're going to do something a little bit different just to show this as this is as much a Python tutorial as it is a Mesa tutorial, right? As we use a function uh, to get the minimum distance, right? And this function, instead of putting the trader class, we'll actually put it uh, just as a function that any one of our classes can access. So instead of using self, it'll be min get distance, right? Uh, and we'll just use a Pythagorean theorem. So it needs uh, our position, the position we're looking to, uh, and then we'll lose use uh, list comprehension again, right? Old tricks are the best tricks, right? Uh, for uh, To iterate through our candidate positions right? and get their distance, right? And that will give us the minimum distance uh, uh, to any position that has maximal welfare. So to do this, again, I like to keep my code uh, clean. I am going to, uh, or at least easy to read, hopefully. Uh, so I'm going to add another header called uh, helper functions. Right, so these are helper functions that any one of the classes can use. If you're using an IDE with different uh, .py files, right, then you just import uh, the function from whatever .py file you're using. Right, so do uh, our function get distance, right, and that will take two uh, arguments, position one and position two. And then we'll add uh, a comment so uh, we know what this function's for. Right? And this is, again, we're just going to use a Pythagorean theorem, uh, which works in a Euclidean space. All right, so calculate the Euclidean distance uh, between two points. So that way we can find the minimum distance uh, of all the tuples that our agent has the potential uh, of items to move to. Uh, then we're also going to put, or for me, I like to know where the these helper functions are moved to, so it's easier for me to understand how the codes are tied together. So I'm going to put uh, used in trader dot move. Right, so now uh, we'll do our actual function, right? So it's a tuple. Position one's a tuple, right? Just x one, you know, y one equals position one. And then x2, y2 equals position 2. This is just extracting the tuple uh, into uh, their specific location. So we can then uh, put them through the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, uh, and then the distance uh, of our x positions, right? So uh, x2, uh, x1 minus x2. Uh, and then the distance of our y position, or between our y positions, y1 minus y2. Um, and then uh, we just have to return, right? Now we can use the square root function in our math library that we imported. So math.square root of the distance squared of x plus the distance uh, between the y positions uh, squared, right? Take the square root of that. Voila, we have our distance between, um, between the position that we're at and the position of maximal welfare. You can see here we're not getting any uh, errors, or we don't see any syntax errors. Uh, and then we're just going to iterate through the candidate's position to get that distance to find the minimum distance. Uh, now we have to do the same thing that we did previously, which is we know that there might be multiple positions uh, that could have the same distance. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we uh, have a list of final candidates that all are close to our minimal position, right? So do position for position uh, in candidates, right? And then we use the same process we used for our candidate indices, where we'll uh, uh, use math.isClose uh, and compare those two positions. All right, so we get the distance um, from our candidate position and compare that with our uh, minimum distance. 
Uh, now there's a couple of different ways you could do this if you uh, had a lot of uh, code, or if you had a lot of agents, you're calculating this a lot, uh, we could do some aggressive ca uh, caching, so you didn't necessarily have to calculate, uh, use the get distance so much. Uh, but again, coding is an iterative process and involves a lot of choices uh, that you have to uh, weigh against uh, the numerous factors that are specific uh, to your situation along. All right, but from this, we'll get a final local variable called final underscore candidates that lists all the potential, that lists all the close positions that provide maximal, uh, maximal welfare. All right, and then uh, we'll shuffle this so that we kind of randomize which position the agents are moving to. All right, all right, and so that's the random.shuffle function we used in our uh, model class in an earlier lesson where we're just going to shuffle those final candidates. So with that done, we can now actually finally move our agents. All right, so this is part four, which we can do in one live, right, which is move agents uh, to the closest position that provide the maximum welfare. All right, so do uh, Mesa's uh, move agent function, right, which for us is stored uh, in our grid, right, that that we imported as part of Mesa um, Mesa space .py file, right, back when we instantiated our model, right, and so uh, the move agent function uh, takes two parameters: the agent object you want to move, which is just self, right, and the position you want to move it to, right. So you can see this, right? Again, you can see all this on GitHub, um, where it takes those two arguments, and uh, you can see. Uh, exactly how that function works, and this is all part of Mesa's space.py file, which we uh, incorporated when we instantiated our multi-grid uh, in our model class, right? And then our final candidates list is just the list of tuples, right? Uh, and so we'll just use the closest one that we just randomly shuffled, right? And so now to make sure it's working, uh, or we test it to uh, see if it's what we think it's doing, we'll do a print statement where we use the mis minimum distance and the final candidates. We run that. And we get an attribute error, right? Oh, because the trader object has no attribute grid, right? So that's fairly simple. We go to that line of code. I forgot to add self.model, right? Which is where we put a pointer to our model class and then grid and then move agent. All right, so again, we had an attribute error where the trader object uh, didn't have an attribute grid because we, I forgot to put model in there, All right? Then we print that out and sure enough, right, we get, uh, uh, our distances, right, plus that position. And you can see uh, this one has two, right, so then we'll just use the closest one. Okay, and that then, uh, if you want, you can save it, pin a revision as this uh, marks the end of session 12, and our move agent function. Okay, so it's a pretty involved uh, last four lessons uh, as our agents look across the landscape, identify which cell gives them the maximal welfare, right, and then moves to one of the closest cells that provides maximal welfare. Right, and so that wraps up our agent move function. Next, we'll have our agents consume resources and then decide who they should trade with. And we'll see you in session 13, where traders